took a bit of time to actually find the lady who holds the key and we're in hi guys so we're in an Ishtig and this is St Mary's church but it's just around here that I'm going to bring you the church is now closed there was mass on there earlier so we've had to come back but just look in here Look at this. Now, just over there is a crypt and it's completely closed up. But just up there is a mausoleum. And we've actually got the key to go in and have a look. But we're going to take a wander around first and have a look at some of these beautiful, beautiful headstones. So this place kind of gives me like um, a gothic feel to it. Look at all of this. What's in here? Oh wow, isn't that gorgeous? So this here is known as the White Tower and it was built inside the nave of the Priory. Church of Milo, Baron alias Fitzgerald of Brownsford, who was the last, um, who was the last uh, prior of Inishtig. Milo Baron was appointed Bishop of Osry in 1528. So, as I said, that's the mausoleum. But uh, I think we'll just take a little walk around first. Down along here. And as we came in, this one caught my eye. Just Jesus mercy wrote at the top. Thy will be done, erected by Michael Bulger in memory of his father, Patrick Bulger, who died in 1915, age 77, and his mother, Bridget, died 1889, age 44. Also, his brother, Ned, who died the 27th of August. 1938, age 54, and his daughter, Bridie. She was only 11 when she died in 1919. His wife, Bridget, 1949, and the girl, Michael, aged 87 in 1967. So really nice headstone there. There's a gorgeous cross. Look at that. Till the shadows retire. Maureen Della Hunty, 1924. I can't see an age on it there, but really, really nice. This is the crypt I was talking about. The stone was erected uh, by for Mr. Thomas Murphy. No, sorry, this stone was erected at the expense of Mr. Thomas Murphy in the memory of his father, James, and his mother, Mary, who lieth here, 1803. And you can just see the sides of the crypt. And obviously that would have been, just here would have been the the entrance. Erected by Mrs. Bridget Gavin, in memory of her father, John. 1925. And her mother, Mary. Look at the designs on that one as well. Really, really beautiful. Richard Tierney here. The hatchery in a steeg. He was 66 when he died in 1939 and his wife Mary. And then just beside him, loving memory of Michael Dwyer, 
High Street, 1962, age 70. So there's a, a pathway that I think I'll go up to next. Erected by Catherine Cummins in memory of her husband, Dennis, 1897, and he was 65. And Dennis, his mother, is there as well, Bridget. She was 81 when she died in 1886. Look at that one. Erected by Dennis Cummins in memory of his beloved father, John. He was 50 when he died in 1842. We've ready and Davis wrote on this. Erected by Patrick Reddy, in loving memory of his dearly beloved wife, Margaret, when she died in 1908. So just there, we're kind of at the side of the crypt now. And you can hear the crows right beside St. Mary's. We actually have another church. And that's it just there in the background. You can see all the windows. Look at that. Erected by Dennis Tracy. Loving memory of his mother-in-law, Julia Roach. She died in 1906, age 60. His daughters, Julia, died 1911, age to six months. Kathleen then died December 1919, age to four. Juliana, 1919, age to eight. His son, James, was 11 when he passed in 1919. And then the above, Dennis himself, he was 71 when he died in 1936 and his wife then Catherine, 1945, age 70. So a lot of his children died very, very young. With some grave markers just up there. Another beautiful high cross. Before I have a look at that one. In loving memory of James O'Leary, his wife Joanna, his brother Thomas and his wife Joanna. Oh, so Thomas must have had, his wife must have been Johanna as well. Their daughter Ellen and also James O'Leary's grandson Patrick who died in infancy. So this looks like a marble cross. That's in loving memory of Patrick O'Brien. 1933, age 68, his wife Mary. 1921, age 55, his daughter Bridie, she was 19 when she passed in 1914, his father Dennis was 68 in 1893, his mother Bridget, she was 72 in 1895 and his granddaughter was just two weeks old when she passed in 1946, so more sadness there, so you can see the path kind of leads the whole way up. I can see a tomb just up ahead. And this here, look at this. What is this? Headstone. Like tin. So they must have had some sort of writing there at some stage. Maybe that was kind of behind the plaque. Another beautiful high cross there. And this is in memory of his parents, directed by Patrick, and his parents were John Delaney, 1922, aged 85, and Sarah. So, you know, from the road, you don't really see all of this, but it is really, really beautifully laid out. Absolutely gorgeous. And that beautiful mausoleum just there. So we're going kind of up along the hill and we can see some of the the older ones along here 
Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of these ones we won't be able to read. A few more markers. And then, would you believe, further up again, we have another part of the, the graveyard. Just there. And it says here, you won't see it with my shadow, eternity. How beautiful is that? And the day is absolutely gorgeous. Now there's something up here on the wall. I'll have to read this. In memory of James Freeney. Wow, guys. Hope you can see that. Famous highwayman, robber and rapparee. Born in Innisteag village in 1719, died in Key Street, New Ross on December the 20th, 1788, aged 69, and buried near this spot in an unmarked family grave. Freeney survived his daring exploits because of his reputation of robbing only the wealthy and sharing generously with the poor. His gentry friends negotiated his pardon while in Kilkenny jail. Seven of his associates were hanged. Wow, so a little bit like a, a Robin Hood story right there. So James Freeney, I think it is a Freeney. So really, really interesting. And obviously he's buried somewhere around here in an unmarked grave. So it could be any one of those. But really, really interesting. Wow. So who would have thought Almost like, as I said, the tales of Robin Hood right here in Innisteeg. And then to be granted pardon while his associates were hanged. Now, can you see that? My shadow was going to, maybe if I stand there, look at that. We salute the memory of George Brown, son of Innisteeg born in Ballyneil, 1906. Um, Manchester working class activist and member of the XV International Brigade in the Spanish Civil War. He lost his life at the Battle of Brunette, I think it is, July 7th, 1937, in defence of the Spanish Republic. Wow. Now, when I stand there, you can't see it, so I hope you can, you can see it there. Beautiful. So the graveyard goes up there and actually we have more here but uh, somebody seems to be cleaning an area near there so what I'm actually going to go and do now is turn around go back down along and we'll go into the the mausoleum so the mausoleum um, is for Mary Ty. in 1787 Henry Ty, MP for Innistig second son of William and Sarah Ty, married Mary Blatchford the poetess and author of Psyche and in the graveyard which is where we are this is the Neo-Greek mausoleum erected to the memory of, of the poetess Mary Ty. Born 1772 and she died in 1810. And when we go in, we'll have a look. We have the key. And you can see it's just these timber doors. And uh, it took a bit of time to actually find the lady who holds the key. And we're in. Wow. 
So this is an effigy of Mary herself. Absolutely gorgeous. And this, the angel, watching over her. And as I said, she was a poet. And she's actually buried down below under this beautiful, beautiful effigy. And then just up here, it actually says, beneath this building, awaiting a joyful resurrection, like the remains of Mary Ty, wife of Henry Ty Esquire of Kilcarry, County Carlow, and daughter of the Reverend William Blandford, or Blatchford, and Theo Dossia Ty, his wife, she died at Woodstock in this parish on the 24th day of March 1810, in her 37th year. And then we have just a verse. If on this earth she passed in mortal cruise, a short and painful pilgrimage, shall we, her sad survivors, grieve that love divine removed her timely to perpetual bliss. Thou art not lost in chastest song and pure, where us still lives thy virtuous mind and seems a beacon for the weary soul to guide her safely through afflictions widening path to that eternal mansion gained by thee. And that says W T at the bottom. So you can see the roof there and we can see a lot of um I suppose it's damp coming in. And if the doors were open, she would be looking out there at all the headstones. She's resting on a beautiful pillow. Now, is that an angel? Or maybe almost like, um, kind of like an elf nearly to me. But that's Mary Ty. An internal rest and then buried below. She was actually married to her cousin and it was supposed to be a very unhappy marriage for her. So we hope that Mary is resting in peace. So really interesting. As I said, we've got a little bit of trouble trying to get the key with this very kind, lovely lady um, gave us the key to come on down and to take a look inside. Now I've just spotted this one. Loving memory of Elizabeth Ash, 1946, age 73. Her daughter Maggie, she was 63 when she died in 1957. Her husband Tom, was 93 in 1958. Her son Tom, sorry, her daughter Annie, aged 86 in 1986. Stacia Ash, 79 in 2007. Billy Ash, 1920 2016. And this says, Daddy and Mammy, we think of you in silence and talk about you too. We have such lovely memories, but wish we still had you. Your needs in life were simple. Your love for us was true. As long as we were happy, you were happy too. And I'm just going to zoom in just to get a look at those beautiful photos, Daddy and Mammy. Absolutely gorgeous. So um, interesting to come and see that beautiful mausoleum from Mary Ty. And then even more interesting the plaques that are on the wall that uh, I had no idea that they were even even there till we walked up along. So really nice to be able to find little pockets of history like that.
We have loads of like um, plaques here. And that kind of brings us back down along. So really, really interesting. Beautiful little place, kind of hidden behind, or between I should say, two churches. So guys, with that being said, take care, God bless, and I'll talk to you soon.